Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill. This is morning prayer for Saturday, June the 17th. It's the second week after Pentecost and week four in the Psalm cycle. Thanks for joining me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia to you, O God, we give thanks. We call on your name. Alleluia. Psalm 75, and please recite it with me. Alleluia to you, O God, we give thanks. We call on your name and declare your wondrous works. You say at the appointed time, I will judge uprightly. Though the earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved, it is I who bear its pillars. I said to the fools, do not boast, and to the wicked, lift not your horn. Lift not your strength on high, do not speak with a proud neck. For judgment comes not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. God humbles one and raises another. For in your hand is a cup full of wine, foaming with mixture. You pour it out and they drink it to the dregs. All the wicked of the earth shall drink it. As for me, I rejoice forever. I sing praises to the God of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. All the horns of the wicked will be cut off, but the righteous shall be strengthened and exalted. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia to you, O God, we give thanks. We call on your name. Alleluia. Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, chapter 46, beginning at verse 1. Joshua, the son of Nun, was mighty in war, and he was the successor of Moses in the prophetic office. He became, as his name implies, a great savior of God's elect, to take vengeance on the enemies who rose against them, so that he might give Israel its inheritance. How glorious he was when he lifted his hands and brandished his sword against the cities. Who before him ever stood so firm? For he waged the wars of the Lord. Was it not through him that the sun stood still and one day became as long as two? He called upon the Most High, the Mighty One, when enemies pressed him on every side. And the great Lord answered him, with hailstones of mighty power. He overwhelmed that nation in battle, and on the slope he destroyed his opponents, so that the nations might know his armament, because their battle was against the Lord, for he was a devoted follower of the Mighty One. And in the days of Moses he showed compassion, he and Caleb, son of Jephunim. They opposed the congregation, restrained the people from sin, and still their wicked grumbling. And these two alone were spared out of the 600,000 infantry to lead the people into their inheritance, the land flowing with milk and honey. The Lord gave Caleb strength, which remained with him in his old age, so that he went up to the hill country, and his children obtained it for an inheritance so that all the Israelites might see how good it is to follow the Lord. Here ends the lesson. Alleluia in Judah, you are known, O God. Your name is great in Israel. Alleluia. Psalm 76, and please recite it with me. Alleluia in Judah, you are known, O God. Your name is great in Israel. Your tent is in Jerusalem, and you make your dwelling place in Zion. It was there you broke the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword and the battle. You are more glorious and excellent than the everlasting mountains. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They've slept their sleep. None of the mighty can lift their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse lie stunned. You are to be feared. Who may stand in your sight when you are angry? 
You caused judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when you rose to judgment to save the humble of the earth. Surely angry Edom shall praise you. The remnants of Hamath will rejoice in you. Make your vows to God and pay them to the Most High. Let all pay tribute to God, who is worthy of our respect. God breaks the spirit of rulers and strikes terror in the leaders of the earth. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. In Judah you are known, O God. Your name is great in Israel. Alleluia. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. This is the third time I'm coming to you. Any charge must be sustained by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warn those who sinned previously and all the others, and I warn them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not be lenient. Since you desire proof that Christ is speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful in you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we are weak in him. But in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you fail to meet the test. I hope you will find out that we have not failed. But we pray to God that you may not do anything wrong. Not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we rejoice when we are weak, but you are strong. This is what we pray for, that you may be restored. So I write these things while I'm away from you, so that when I come, I may not have to be severe in using the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Be restored. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Here ends the lesson. Now let us pray for the church and the world. For the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Jennifer Ann, our bishop. For Brother Joe, our community servant. For all of our church leaders, and for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor, for the hungry and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Joe, our president, for Katie, our governor, for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, for Putin and Zelensky and the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That God, who's begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. O God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for the mercy of God community and for the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Claire and all your saints, let us commend one another all of our lives to Christ our God. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Precious God, you are our defender and savior. Your name is great in all the world. Raise us up to sing your praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.